to. It's called uh, Spanish Village by the Sea is what we call it, and it's maintained the, um, the charm, uh, culture, and... I finally found my dream location uh, to, re to retire in. Gorgeous beaches, great weather, and now in one swoop, San, San Onofre could just wipe that out. I can't let that happen. I was sitting in my backyard, reading the paper, having a cup of coffee. This, we've got perfect weather here in San Clemente. Um, and then I read in the paper that San Onofre nuclear plant was, was actually firing workers for reporting safety problems to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And prior to reading that, I thought, if you're running a nuclear plant, you're going to be super careful because the consequences are just unbelievable. You know, we would basically lose Southern California if that plant had a nuclear meltdown, like what's going in at, in Fukushima, Japan right now. And this was prior to Fukushima that I read this. And I thought, this, this can't be true. This must just be a disgruntled employee or something. Uh, uh, but I decided I better find out. Uh, so I went to an NRC meeting and it was all true. Edison was there speaking about how they have a safety culture problem um, and they were talking about that and it was obvious that this was a big problem that they weren't really dealing with uh, in the meeting. Then a uh, ex-employee of San Onofre, an electrical engineer, he got up to speak as a member of the public and he said that the circuit breakers that are a critical part of the system to keep the, the water, keeping the, um, uh, the radiation the, under control so we wouldn't have a meltdown, that those circuit breakers would never trip. This is similar to saying you don't worry about plugging in an extra appliance because you know your wiring isn't going to catch on fire because the circuit breaker will trip and stop the electricity before something happens. Well, that's not the case at San Onofre. And he reported this problem 10 years ago to his management and tried to get them to say this is a critical problem that needs to be fixed. They ignored him. He finally reported it to the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And initially they ignored it, but after he reported it, his management started to come after him because he reported this. And he had an excellent performance rating, and all of a sudden they started making up things, changing his performance evaluations so he could see the writing on the wall that they were getting to set him up to fire him. So he took an early retirement before that could happen. And after he retired, he was still concerned about the safety issue so he actually flew on his own dime to regional headquarters in Texas and finally got somebody to understand the simple concept that the circuit breaker needs to trip before the wires catch on fire. You know, this doesn't sound like rocket science here. And so they finally wrote it up. They cited Edison. But now it's 10 years later. We still don't know if the problem is fixed. The NRC called it a non-cited violation. A non-cited violation in NRC terms means, well, we're going to tell Edison they need to fix it, but they don't need to let us know if they did fix it. They do not need to document this issue, and NRC doesn't need to follow up to make sure they did it. And this electrical engineer right now is still trying to find out if they fixed this problem or not. And we do not know to this day. And he's getting the runaround from the NRC. He's getting the runaround from Edison. And this is just an example of one whistleblower um, story. And this whistleblower showed me how to read uh, the, the NRC website. And he told me that safety allegations, which are, safety allegations are uh, complaints from employees and other people about safety issues at San Onofre that are not being dealt with. Um, and based on what he shared with me, I took the data, the statistics, the NRC statistics, and turned them into a chart. And this chart shows that San Onofre has more complaints from employees than any other plant in the entire country, any other nuclear power plant in the entire country. And this has been going on for five years. And you know what Edison is doing about this? Well, I've got another chart 
with NRC statistics showing that they have the highest rate of retaliation against employees that report safety problems. Given that we, I now know that we have a much higher risk than most nuclear plants in the entire country of having a meltdown here because of basically Edison mismanagement and no adequate oversight by the NRC, I could not get involved in this issue. I had to get involved in this issue and I'm hoping to, uh, with this interview, to share this with other people that also don't know. I didn't know less than three years ago this was going on, um, but I know now and we are at risk of losing everything we care about here. People think, well, we have to live with the risk because we need the energy. This is what we're all to told. These nuclear plants are critical for California. Well, guess what? I find out after I do more digging that we actually have a surplus of energy in California, 40% surplus in California without the nuclear plants. And this data is, is from the California Public Utilities Commission, the CPUC. Apparently we had to build up gas plants because California was worried we'd have another critical problem like we, like we did a few years ago. And so they basically overbuilt. San Onofre has been offline since January 31st when it leaked radiation into the atmosphere. Uh, and it leaked radiation because they installed some new parts where they tried to get more power out of that nuclear plant to make more money, and those things failed dismally within one year. So we've been without San Onofre since January for months and months and months. Through one of our hottest summers, we have had no problem. And our electric grid operator, it's called the California ISO, Independent System Operator, they have come up with plans to make sure that we do not have blackouts to, well, you, to make sure that if we have any blackouts, they won't be caused by San Onofre coming down. They have a number of contingency plans. Considering San Onofre has the worst safety record, highest rate of retaliation of employees, and that we don't need the energy, why are we being forced to take this risk? That's the big question I had. And what I found out is it's all about making sure Edison can make their profits. They make a million dollars a day every day that reactor is running. And we have a public utility commission that actually has a former president of Edison in charge of it. So the public utility commission might as well be called the private utility commission because they're really looking out for the utility companies over, over our own interests, over our safety, over, over what we're being charged to pay for this plant. And we actually pay some of the highest rates, electricity rates, in the entire nation. And I have a chart on the San Onofre Safety.org website that actually shows the chart. And other states, when they're, even, even uh, South Carolina, they, they put together this chart bragging about how low their rates are. And do you know who they used as a comparison? They use Edison because they have one of the highest rates in the country. So we have the highest electricity rates in the nation. And so that dispels that myth that nuclear power is almost too cheap to meter. I mean, this is, this is just in, insane. We had an NRC meeting recently and they handed out a lot of brochures. And it, and it says here, the NRC, independent regulator of nuclear safety. And if you read this, I mean, this might as well be a fable that you read to your children because it is such a one-sided document and is so leaving out so much critical information. Um, it's, it's leaving out all the reasons that the NRC is not protecting us. The NRC is not an independent regulator. They are what's called a, cap a captured uh, regulator. The NRC even did their own report. After the Fukushima meltdown, they produced a report, kind of a lessons learned from Fukushima. And in there, it stated that the NRC lowers safety standards in order to keep these old antique nuclear plants running. Because if they had to meet current safety standards, we would be shutting them all down. And there are the governor's audit auditors have also pointed out the problems with the NRC. And yet nobody is doing anything about this. We're being forced to live with this risk when we don't need the energy, 
just so the utility companies can make a profit at our expense. Uh, um, one of the NRC's little booklets, this one's called Protecting Our Nation. It talks about spent, spent nuclear fuel storage. And nowhere, in, in the, and it gives us the impression that we're safe, that they've got the highest safety standards. They're doing, you know, doing everything they can to keep us safe. And it doesn't, and, it, and they call it spent nuclear fuel, giving the impression that all the radiation has gone out of it. Well, the reality, the fact is, it is actually more dangerous when it comes out of a nuclear plant, when it's spent, than when it goes in. And it lasts, and it lasts for thousands and thousands of years. And this fuel needs to stay covered, this so-called spent fuel, highly radioactive waste, needs to be covered, continually covered, with cold water, because it keeps heating up. And if we lose electricity and that water quits flowing, we will have a nuclear meltdown. We will have a nuclear disaster like Fukushima. And that waste, there's, a, there's tons of it sitting right here at our beach by the nuclear plant, right near San Clemente's border in San Diego County. And, and every day that plant runs, they generate another 600 pounds every day. And this is going on all over the country. And they have, they have, they don't know what to do with it. They promised us when they built nuclear plants that, you know, we're smart. We'll come up with a solution. Don't worry about what we're going to do with this stuff. Just go ahead and build it. And it's been what 40, 40 or 50 years later. They have absolutely no solution for this highly toxic nuclear waste. So we're forced to live with this waste in our communities basically forever at this point. Every time the power goes out. I hold my breath because I think if the power's out at San Onofre, we could have a meltdown, and it's uh, and it's and it's a reality. It really could happen. And now the nuclear plant, it's spilled radiation in the air even when it's running. So whether the plant is running or not running, uh, we're still in danger. We're still in danger here. One of the things I learned about a nuclear plant is cold water has to be continuously running over the fuel or we will have a meltdown. And this is true even if uh, the, the plant is not operating. And there's also the spent fuel that is highly toxic, highly radioactive, that also needs to be continuously cooled. And if it stops, then we have a meltdown. When San Onofre is not running, well, actually even when it's running or not running, it has to have electricity from outside the plant. So they, they're they dependent on, on our power system, our electric power system to provide energy to the plant. They don't, the, the nuclear plant doesn't provide its own energy to keep it running. It relies on outside electricity, just like we require electricity for our house, they require electricity from outside the plant to keep running. So if we have a blackout here and the, and the power goes out in the area in, at San Onofre, we could have a meltdown. They have, gen, they have generators that are supposed to run for a few days in case they lose their power source, but they've had problems with the generators not working. You know, they went five. They went five years without knowing that the 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 generators had a problem, and they wouldn't have started if we had a power outage. So, if they're going five years without checking their generators to make sure they work, what what else are they not test testing? Forty percent of the imports for the entire country come in through California. What we're risking with a meltdown with San Onofre is we're missing the entire economy of the country, probably of the world. And we haven't even touched on the agriculture um, in San Onofre. If that goes, we've covered our land with radiation, our whole food supply here, which most, most of what the, this, the nation gets in terms of fruits and vegetables and other products is, comes from California. Uh, the California economy would be destroyed. This will affect the world economy. 
And for all you people that live on the East Coast, guess which way the wind blows. San Onofre melts down, the wind heads inland. So it's going to be heading across the nation and affecting um, the rest of the nation. Food supply, this is going to be, uh, you know, I mean, why are we living with the risk of our food supply, all the imports for our, for our nation, for a nuclear plant we don't need? This is insane. You know, okay, so Edison, they lose a few million dollars. We're at risk for, for everything, you know? Uh, I got involved thinking, you know, I live in this gorgeous, I live in this gorgeous community here. Um, it's, it's beautiful here in Southern California, but don't tell anybody that because we like to keep it a secret. Uh, and to think that everything that I've worked for all my life uh, would just be destroyed in a minute by, by these people that don't care and nobody's doing anything about this, you know. We have, Governor Brown is in a position, he has the authority, he has the influence. He, he could shut down this plant and save California. Why is Jerry Brown not saving California? Why is he allowing this unnecessary nuclear plant and the unnecessary nuclear plant, Diablo Canyon in San Luis Obispo, why is he allowing these two plants to continue running when so much is at risk, when we don't need them? I want an answer to that question. Uh, I have not gotten an answer to that question. We have, he has the authority through the Water Resources Control Board. There's a law, there's a law, a federal law that the, our water, California Water Resources Control Board is supposed to implement to not allow uh, once through cooling power plants and both nuclear plants are called once through cooling, and they destroy, uh, they destroy um, thousands or millions of our uh, marine, marine life. You know, they're killing marine life, and this has been determined to be illegal, and they're supposed to do something about it. And yet the plants keep running, and, and I asked the governor's office myself, do you have the authority under the Water Resources Control Board to shut these two nuclear plants down since they do not comply with the once through cooling um, uh, law. And I finally got an answer after continuing to ask the same question and not leaving the office until I got the answer. And the answer was yes. If they wanted to, they could shut that plant down just through that one law. And to add to this, Dr. Dr. Lucy Jones, she's a seismologist for the USGS in Pasadena. She held a recent uh, interview on ABC where she said that the magnitude of an earthquake will sometimes change after an earthquake starts because after an earthquake starts, if the earth crust moves, then the magnitude of an earthquake will change. So no matter what tests you do, you will never know what the magnitude is going to be. If you notice, if you, you'll, you'll see with some of the uh, new California earthquake charts uh, you'll find on the state uh, websites that deal with seismic, they've changed how they uh, say what earthquakes will be. They put 6.5 plus. So basically they're saying, well, we know it's capable of a 6.5 and more. That's how they're starting to show their charts because no scientist knows, and this the USGS says this on their website, if you go to their FAQ, their fact section, they'll say, we have never been able to predict a major earthquake ever. We don't know how, we have no plans to know how. So basically, what else do you need to know? We already have large earthquake faults under both by both nuclear plants, Diablo Canyon and San Onofre. We already know we're vulnerable yet we continue to run unnecessary plants, putting us at risk. Please somebody tell me why we're doing this because there is no logical reason. And the only thing I can think of is the public has been fed a bunch of stories that are not true and it's time to share this with everyone you know because until the public is aware of what the risk that, that we're being put under for no reason until the word gets out, they, they, they're going to continue to be able to get away with telling us these lies and giving us false information. So please share this information with all your friends. 
and I've, I've created a website called sananofresafety.org that has all this information I'm telling you. It has the details. It has all the government documents. It has the ISO documents. Um, so if people want more information or or are as in disbelief that I am that what I'm saying could possibly be true, just check out the website and and uh, and I think you'll be joining us to try and get the word out to the public. We're not safe. Southern California is not safe. Please check the sananofresafety.org website. See how you can get involved. Get educated. Share this with your communities, your city councils, your senior groups, and demand, demand that Jerry Brown save California and shut these nuclear plants down now.